welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Today is June 13th and I'm broadcasting from Los Angeles live. Uh, it's nice to see all of you again. It's been a couple, of, I think it's been two weeks that I haven't broadcasted. So um, frankly, I really miss connecting with all of you and it's about time. And just let, letting you know, the next uh, academy is going to be this uh, next Tuesday, um, like always. And then I'll announce uh, the following academy and we'll go on from there. So for the moment, I'm going to be asking you to simply do a very easy meditation. As I've said it before, meditation actually is a very natural phenomena that always happens in our lives. Uh, we all have meditated uh, throughout the course of our lives. And uh, meditation doesn't really have any kind of forms or looks. Although we all kind of, these days, uh, we're connecting meditation with a look, as, as if you're sitting in a lotus posture and holding your hands like this. But meditation doesn't have any looks. You could be walking, running, swimming, cooking, making love, or do whatever you're doing and be in a state of meditation. And um, so what we're going to do is very, very simple. So I'm going to ask you to divert your attention from the other world, including uh, taking your attention off of your thoughts and your emotions, and take your attention inwards towards from where you can see your thoughts, from where you notice your feelings. You take your attention towards the observer, not what's being observed. Your thoughts are being observed by you. Your emotions are being noticed by you. So they're objects. They're traveling through. They're not who you are. So you take your attention towards the one who is aware of the thoughts, is aware of the emotions, and is also aware of the body sensations. So just go ahead, simply divert your attention inwards. And this has to be very uh, effortless. If you're going to put effort into it, then you know you're not doing it right. It must be very effortless. Just simply shifting your attention back to the source of yourself. So go ahead and do that. Take a deep breath and just relax into this moment. And keep in mind, you don't need to do a mantra and you don't have to keep your attention on your breath. You're simply taking your attention back to the source of yourself. And that doesn't require any effort. Just breathe naturally and keep your attention on one point. Keep your attention on the source of yourself from where you are observing the thoughts, from where you notice your emotions. Just keep your attention on that place. 
and immediately your mind quiets down. Just keep your attention on one point without any effort. Simply hang out in this moment. 
without any agendas, without trying to accomplish anything to get anywhere. You're, you're simply here, present, hanging out in this moment without an agenda. and allow meditation to take place. Slowly, slowly come back, come back here. When you become familiar with the space, which is already here within yourself, which is the presence, and the presence is always with you wherever you go, and it's not depending on your location. It's not like you go to uh, by the ocean and all of a sudden, presence appears, or you're in the woods, or you're in the desert, and the nature gives you the presence. The presence is with you no matter where you're at. Wherever you go, it goes with you, and it's a part of who you are. The reason that most of the time we're in the city or we're involved with our daily lives, you're not feeling the presence, you're not feeling the meditation, you don't feel the bliss, is because, it's not because you're in a city or you're in your house or apartment, it's because your mind is busy and your focus is on your thoughts or your emotions. It has nothing to do with your geographical location. The reason we go to the nature, we go somewhere very beautiful and surreal and is because your attention shifts from the busy mind and also you leave your story behind, your emotional story, whatever it is, uh, your story of your, your past, um, whatever it is, you leave it behind and now you're at the nature and and the nature is reflecting back, it's a mirror. It's mirroring back at you who you are. And what happens is it, it forces you to become present. And since 
from childhood we've been brainwashed and also hypnotized to project. It's a projection that happens that if I'm in the nature and uh, I'm away from home, then automatically I leave all my issues at home. Now I'm on a vacation. I'm not going to bring my issues with me and I'm going to be 100%. And something happens in our psyche automatically that we're projecting that because I'm in a very beautiful place, now I can relax and I can be meditative or I can feel the bliss. So, and that's what happens, is that you leave your story, whatever is your story, you leave it behind and you become available and you're projecting that because you're in the nature, you're somewhere by the ocean, you're in Caribbeans, uh, I don't know, you're in Bahamas, what, whatever, you're in Thailand uh, on a beautiful beach or Bali, and now you're going to be feeling the bliss and the meditation comes. So, but that's a false uh, perception because once you recognize the place the space which is within yourself you'll you'll be able to tap into it regardless of where you're at you could be in the middle of the traffic uh it could be five o'clock in the afternoon on a friday and you're in a central train station in a train with thousands of people in the train and you can easily go into this state of bliss and feel the presence when once you start to realize it that is here then it goes with you wherever you go what what you need to do is to do a regular practice of shifting the attention from the thoughts that are passing the stream of thoughts that are con continuously passing through your mind and this identify from it this false identification that whatever i think is who i am and the false identification that i'm my emotions this ups and downs and switching from the false to the real and uh, then immediately you can feel the presence you can feel this deep connection to yourself and it becomes very quiet and it goes with you wherever you go it must be that way if it's not that way then it's conditional then you're in a conditional place that the outside elements must be exactly the way you want them to be otherwise you're not going to feel the bliss and that's only half of the deal you're not getting the whole thing you're just getting half of it it must be in a in an in an unconditional situation that you can always tap into it regardless of where you're at or what you're doing so keep that in mind and work on that if you really want the real freedom the real freedom which is not conditional it's always available no matter where you're at the when you do this work and you are able to divert your attention inwards and looking putting your attention on the observer on the one who knows on the one who's aware and i'm using different words uh, for you to connect with is what you do is you create a situation to have a direct experience direct experience is the key into self-realization and basically 
helping yourself and creating the environment that you can free yourself from suffering. That's the key is basically we want to be happy. And in order to be happy, we have to discover inner peace. And inner peace is basically subject on a quiet mind and an awareness that is not identified with the swing of the emotions. And an awareness that is not identified with the physical body. So, because you can't control your body, you can't control your emotions, and you cannot control your thoughts. But you can put your attention on the one who observes the three. So, and that will give you the direct experience. Now, there are different schools of spirituality and different ways that people go about it. There is the different kind of paths. Some school of uh, spirituality, they're focused on clearing your past. They're focusing on you working on your childhood issues of whatever have happened and going through the traumas that you've experienced from your childhood. And they tell you that you can reach ultimate peace and self-realization unless you clear your past, unless you go to the trenches and work on your traumas and the issues that have been inflicted on you in your childhood. But that kind of work is, doesn't give you a direct, it's not the path of the direct experience. And a lot of us have to do this and go through this path. It's necessary for a lot of people to do it, but it's still the wrong, longer route to get to this place because it's not direct experience. Then there is the path of the bhakti. The, the path of the bhakti, which is the worship, is that we do a lot of mantras, we're doing singings, um, like the kirtan. I don't know if you heard of the kirtan or not. These are devotional singing, and they have them in every kind of culture, and they're doing it in Christianity. They're doing dev devotional singing in, in the church, and uh, the Muslims have, have it in their own way. The Buddhists have it. The Hindus, they have it, and they do a lot of devotional singing to the gods or one god. And through all these devotions and keeping your attention on one god, whatever the name of the god is, and singing, devo devoting yourself, your life into that, comes the bliss and eventually forces the mind to collapse into the heart and brings you to self-realization. But my, so that's one way of doing it. Another way is the path of the inquiry. That if you do the inquiry such as, who am I? Who is it that is suffering and who is this one that is seeking self-realization and is seeking freedom who is it down in there that is aware of the thoughts and that is aware of, of the emotions and the body so that's another path of the path of the inquiry so to go inwards and to look for the source of yourself. However, what I've discovered is that I find it more effective if you combine the two together. That the path of the bhakti, bhakti 
is combined with the path of self-inquiry. So there is devotion to the source, to the self, as well as self-inquiry. That the two mixed up with each other, they work very quickly and they bring you into this place and bring you, gives you the um, direct experience of touching the source, the source of yourself, coming in contact with your divine self, because she's definitely here. Your divine self is here, always. And your divine self is that which has brought you here today that you're listening to these words. There is something within you much bigger than anything else that is desiring freedom, desiring to become free. And this freedom, you may say, okay, I'm looking for third eye activation. I'm looking for connecting with my higher self. Uh, somebody may say, um, I like to find out the meaning of my life. Somebody else may say, well, I'm seeking inner peace. Or maybe you're looking for your soulmate or or maybe somebody wants to find a way that how they can get what they want in life. I don't know what you're looking for, but what's your very source of motivation? We all have our own reasons, but ultimately this will bring you to one, one thing. If you really dig into it and go for it is ultimately is how I can overcome this sense of loneliness that I'm separated and I'm not connected and no one really understands what I go through and how I can come to this place of basically really being happy. I'm here and I'm happy. And it's the kind of happiness that it's not connected to I get what I want because that's not the real happiness. When you get what you want, you're happy short term and then you lose it. So that's not it. It's got to be something which is permanently here and it's not conditional and you tap into it and regardless of getting what you want or you don't, you, you feel blissed out. You feel the bliss. Not blissed out like in this way that you're not operational, but in a way that you're steady and you're very balanced. And regardless of what's happening, you're in your own center. That's the real thing. And when you do that, as you get closer on this path, the mind gets more quiet because you're keeping your focus on one thing. You're keeping your focus on the observer and it forces, forces the mind to become one-pointedness. So you're not giving the mind any kind of juice. You're not giving it you're not feeding it. When you keep your attention on the source, you're depriving the mind from its food. But if you take your mind, if you take your attention off of the source, then your attention is going to go on the objects. Then your attention is going to go on the story, either your own story or whatever is happening in the world. And then you're, you're feeding the mind and you're making it strong again. And the mind 
keeps creating and recreating another story over and over again because it's basically projecting. It's a projection that is happening continuously within yourself, in your psyche. So the reality that you're perceiving and you're dealing with, it's a projection created by your own mind. So in order to pop out of it and to free yourself from the story or the nightmare, the mind has to go into silence. Now, keep, keep uh, understand one thing, because this is where a lot of people misunderstand, and they think, because there's a lot of different schools of spirituality that they're telling you by positive thinking, positive visualization, you can manipulate your reality, and you can get what you want. But what people don't understand is that's only feeding the mind to activate the mind and it keeps you in the story. It keeps you into the matrix. It keeps you into the world of duality. And you don't get free. Even if you get what you want for a short period of time, you're not free. And that's not the way to go. That's not going to free you. It's not positive thinking or positive visualization to create a better reality. It's no visualization and no thinking. That's how you change your life. Because what happens is the more the mind is quiet, the more you get activated. You activate an energy field which is within yourself and that happens through a silent mind. The energy field begin to get activated and it creates a field, a bubble of energy around you. And that only happens through a silent mind, a quiet mind. And this energy field starts to affect whatever comes to in, in touch with it. So it affects your surrounding wherever you go. But then again, we're not doing it from an egoistic part of look at me, look at me. I have created an energy field around myself and I'm doing it because people want to look at me or I want to impress somebody or I want to get what I want. No. You're going about it the wrong way if you're doing it that way. This is the way you, you are going about this is basically there is no agenda. You're not planning on doing anything. You simply are quiet within yourself. And through this quietness, things starts to happen. Magic starts to happen. The magic that comes with it is a byproduct. It's goodies that you get on the side. What you're after is really inner peace. You want to be happy and you can't be happy unless your mind is quiet. There's no other way. It's just impossible. It's impossible to be happy with a busy mind. No human being on this planet has ever accomplished it. It just doesn't exist. You want to be happy, the mind needs to be quiet. It's very, very simple, actually.
once you touch it, then you just see, oh my God, it's really that simple. And then it just comes to you. Because it, it starts to get activated and as, as the grid gets activated, then it, it takes a life of its own. And then you start to see the synchronicity because you have chosen freedom and you're walking towards in that direction and you're rejecting anything else. You only want freedom. Then freedom is gonna come after you or make the path easy for you. And it invites you, it pulls you in, which has already happened. Anybody has any questions for me? And if you have a question, you can write on the um, chat box in case if I don't see you. Hi, Cecilia. Hello, how are you? Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah, are you, in, are you in California? Yes, I am. Okay. I've been wanting to contact you. It's just been, have a million things to do when I got back. But I, I, I knew I'm going to see you today. So nice to see you. Nice to see you too. We can talk in the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, Rosalie, I don't understand what you're saying. Hi, Rosalie. Hi. Hello. Hello. I, I talk about that to fall in love with a face and, 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 and a body to a person, or to fall in love with the soul of the person. The different. So let me see if I understand. When you, you mean when you fall in love with someone? Yeah. Okay. And some, some fall in love with the face and the body. Right. Yeah. And other one fall in love with the soul. Right. Yeah, right. the different. Yeah, the normally the falling in love with the face and the body doesn't last very long. <laughs> it's falling in love with the soul that lasts a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Monica. Hi. Hi, nice to see you. Yes, I missed the meditation because I, I put the finger on the wrong spot, the wrong knob. Right, yeah. I didn't see you from the, the beginning and then I had to wait and then I missed the meditation. Right. But I'm very happy to hear what you say. It gives me a lot. It's well, I'm so true. I'm happy. Thank it's you. I really true appreciate all you say. <laughs> huh. All well, you I appreciate it. True. Well, thank you. It's it's. Uh, I appreciate hearing that. And we're gonna have uh, eleven days in order together, and that's coming very soon. Mm. Yes. I'm excited about it. Oh, yes. I'm gonna see most of you. I'm gonna see in order. Yes. So. That's going to be a good one. Yeah. Well, nice to see you again. Have some new people. Hi. I'm going to. Okay. Hi, hi, Anita. Yes. Anita. 
is half says is that uh, your your you pick that up from the Persian poet Hafez, or that comes? Yes, yes, something yeah. like this. Everybody tells that, but I'm not from Iran. <laughs> <laughs> it's not from the Persian. Right. Only, yes, from Muslim husband. <laughs> I see. So have you read anything from Hafez? Uh, yes, I wrote some some things, but not really. Uh, I uh, not really uh, very seriously, you know. Right. I I know only he's very popular. Uh, yeah, all uh, over the world. Well, he he's a mystic. He's a Sufi. So like Rumi, and uh, the rest of the mystics. So they, they all went through self-realization. All of them, they realized love and they fell in love and they lost themselves in love. This is so, always the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I remember I was with one of my spiritual teachers. This is a long time ago. And, uh, and he said, Zarathustra, get lost and be lost forever and uh it took me when he said that to me it took me a little bit time before i really digested it, it was like what does he mean get lost at first i thought he says get lost get out of here but then it clicked to me that he means get lost into the love and then you're lost for good so that's a good place to be lost <laughs> or not depends yeah so <laughs> that's what happens when you get pulled on this path and you get you go deeper within yourself because the deeper you go within yourself the more you discover the true love and the more you discover your uh, soulmate the real soulmate is within yourself, the one that we've been looking for all of our lives, looking for the soulmate, the real one is here, and it's always with you. It's the only one who's not going to betray you or leave you. So in that recognition, the true love appears in your life. And true love will transform whatever that comes in contact with it. The power of love that comes within yourself will transform everything and it will burn all illusions. Nothing false of nature can exist in it. So eventually, it will destroy and it will burn anything which is not real. Because of its fire, because of its magnitude, because of the light that comes through, that shadows cannot exist. And the darkness, it illuminates everything. That's the true love. So, and here, Ru, Ruhart, I, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I, I tried to unmute you, but I can't. Yeah, hi. Hi. Yeah, hi. Have we met before? I'm Tito from Germany. Were you I'm at, did I meet Frankfurt. you? Yeah, at, at uh, which event have we met? Because I can't really see your face very well. Like two weeks in oh, yeah. Frankfurt. Hi. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you. Hey. Yeah. Hello, well, my brother. Yeah. Good seeing you. How's it going? Thank you. Fine. And the workshop has helped you? Yeah, very. I'm very, very happy to hear that. I hope I see you in October in Frankfurt. Well, me too. I'm definitely planning on coming. So I'll be there. This time I think I stay there for 10 days. Okay. So, 
Yeah, and I see your friend is there. Hi. Hello. Hi. That's Hi. Martina. Martina, nice to meet you. Hi. Yeah, welcome. I'm happy you're joining us today. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So. Oh, hi. Hi, Melena. Hi. Hi. Thank you nice. for having me on Friday. Are you welcome? You're welcome. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that that it works out now with with the connection here. It's. Uh, I just uh, tried it again, and now it's it's working. I'm I'm happy about that. Yeah. Thank God to the modern technology. Are you driving? Yeah. Um, no, I'm just, um, my husband is driving. He's just. Oh. <laughs> this is um, great. I love some, it. Some shopping. No, we, we're having our wedding day today. 14 years. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and and um, so we just went out for, for, for having some ice. And um, I was um, uh, hearing you um, via Facebook. For the time we went out, and now, no, I'm here. And I'm, right. I'm happy about that, and uh, I just wanted to to let you know that that it uh, it, it it's working out. Um, I I'm I'm getting more calmer, and um, I'm I think I'm more uh, centered now. It, it's it's a process we we started, and and it's it's um, going. Yes. I'm happy to hear that. Just keep your attention on the source of yourself and everything will work out from there. It's, it's just like that. And uh, that's what happens when we get... Th thanks for sharing, by the way. Appreciate it. And um, that's the beauty of the work. That's the beauty of the direct experience of your own self is coming to this point at this level of your spirituality that you have gone through all these other levels and you've done all this other work, whatever it was. I mean, we're all coming from different backgrounds and something has brought us to this place. So some of, some of us had to work on ourselves with as i said with our childhood and traumas of the things have happened to us but everything that you've gone through as you get closer to yourself you realize that first of all you're not a victim your attitude changes and you're thankful for whatever has happened to you even if somebody in your life has harmed you you're grateful for that because that has helped you to come to this place. And what you do now that you take responsibility for everything that has happened to you, it doesn't matter what it's been, and shifting things around. You turn the poison into the medicine. You instead of taking the position of a victim you take the position of a victor you become a victor not a victim by saying well thank you okay you beat me up that when i was a kid you put me down or mom you abandoned me whatever you've done to me thank you i appreciate for coming into my life and abandoning me and forcing me to grow because that's what happens that those negative events that have happened in our lives they force us to look within they force us to go inside and at this jun juncture in your life wherever you're at that we're here at this point that's what we're going to do. We're no longer taking a position of being a victim. We're shifting things and taking responsibility for whatever has happened to us because it has helped me to grow 
and to become who I am today. Without those punches that I had to take throughout my life, I would have, I would have not been who I am today. I would be a different person. Obviously, my higher self existence found it fit that I had to go through what I had to go through to become who I am today, to get stronger, more powerful, more centered, and to recognize love. Of course, same circumstance could be for somebody else and they get punched through life and they can go towards being bitter and go to alcoholism or hating life and shutting down and going to this negative path. Yeah, that happens to some people and they go in that direction. But we choose to go towards the light. We choose to use every negative situation that happens to us and turn the poison to the medicine. We take responsibility for what has happened to us, no matter what has happened, who has done something wrong to us, we take responsibility for it. And we refuse to be a victim. And use that opportunity to fuel your fire. You fall down, somebody cheats you, somebody do you wrong, you use that situation to get stronger. You use that situation to go into the light. So you're open, you're open to life. Whatever is going to happen, no matter what happens to me, I'm going to use and absorb this situation to make me stronger, to make me bigger, to make my heart bigger, a much bigger container. I refuse to be a victim. And then with that attitude, your life starts to change. Because now you're not feeding the story. The story happens, you get the hit, you look at it that whatever has happened, that person who came to your life and did you wrong, you look at it this way that it was a part of the deal, it's a part of the contract you had with this person. For them to come to your life and to do you wrong at this point in your life. And that wrongdoing, you're not looking at it that they did you wrong, you're looking at it that they taught you a lesson. You learned something very valuable from this event. And now you're using whatever has happened as a fuel to the fire to go deeper within yourself into the silence rather than into the story. You're turning things around in your advantage. Then life can't do you any wrong anymore because you're turning everything that seems to be wrong in your advantage do you see can you see what i'm talking about do you see that you're turning the poison into medicine you're turning every disadvantage situation in your life towards and an advantage to yourself.
And this is the opposite of what the rest of the world does. The rest of the world, they fall down, they get very bitter, they become negative, they blame other people for what has happened to them, they want to take revenge, they want to close their hearts. Uh, one moment, Rosalie, let me finish up and I'll get to you. And, and then they just get stuck into this world of the thoughts, the world of hate, duality, revenge, negativity, and the mind gets fed. More thoughts are being created. And the more the mind is busy, the more you're in this illusion. You have to go beyond the thoughts, beyond the mind, into the silence, where it's quiet, where it's zen. You're here. No matter what is going on in the world, you're just silent inside. You're involved, you do your things during the day, but there is no thoughts. You're quiet inside, no thoughts. No matter what's going on in the world, you're not involved with the world of thoughts. You're silent. And the more you become quiet, the more you start to feel the field of love around you, the more powerful it gets and it takes over your life. And you begin to operate in this life from no mind. You're doing things perfectly from no mind. It's possible. You just have to try it and you see it for yourself. All right, Miss Rosalie, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, when some somebody have done you something really bad, and you have let it go, you have forgiven everyone, and when something happened with someone as they really close to you, and the same happened to that person, that what's happened to you coming back to you like a tsunami, but I find out that it's more easy to let it go the second time. But okay. Why is, okay. Yeah. Why is turned back like like a tsunami when thing happen around? Right. 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 Okay. So for me is what. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> For me, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. So, I, what I, this is how I look at it. When you start to shift, when the shift happens, and you start to realize, and in the beginning, maybe this shift happens for you it's an intellectual understanding. Maybe this is not your every moment understanding of the absolute. I understand that, but bear with me and bear with yourself is there's one thing, it could be at the very point, focal point of your um, intellectual understanding of the absolute. Number one, there is no others. There is no others. There is no other person. 
It just does not exist. It's only one. So there is no other people going to do harm to you because they don't really exist. They look like there is an appearance of duality. It just appears to be that way. And because we're in, the mind is functioning, so you're in time space. Time is created and space has been created. So therefore, there is the appearance of there is a separation. There is this phone. This is my hand and this phone. I'm holding something separated from myself. And there is people who are out there doing something to me. But when you start to realize that there is no others, and maybe that first starts through an intellectual understanding, it's only the self. It's only yourself. And then somebody out there doing something wrong to you, that is a reflection of where you're at. So it's yourself, since there is no others, have done something to you. So as you start to open up, we can say you're opening up your third eye. That's a way of saying it. Or you, you're elevating your consciousness to a higher level of understanding, entering into the fifth dimensional consciousness, is starting to realize that there are no others. It's different aspect of yourself. Whether you like it or you don't like it, it doesn't matter. There are different aspects of yourself. And in this game, you need to learn something. This is mirroring back to you something that you have to learn because you're in this evolutionary process. You're in this Lila in this life game that you have signed up for and somehow you're here you incarnated in a human body and you're meant to go through these different experiences and there are these other characters show up in your life which are aspects of yourself and playing in this game of duality and doing something wrong to you so as your consciousness expands, you start to see that. You start to, maybe you're not at a place in your evolution that you're in absolute oneness and you're completely realizing there's no other. I understand that. But then the understanding starts with an intellectual state of recognizing that the others are really aspects of yourself. For me, that's what happened. As my teacher was explaining this to me, and I trusted him, I began to examine this, and I began to look at life from that point of view. That doesn't mean that if somebody breaks into my house tonight, and they want to rob me or steal things that doesn't mean i'm not going to fight them i'm not going to resist them i'm just going to let them come and steal everything and i say to myself there is no others i still will defend my home but in the truth i know that there is no others it's an aspect of myself it's all connected And coming to that understanding makes a world difference because then it will bring you out of the victim situation. And you look at it that when something like that happens, what is it I need to learn from this situation? What is it mirroring back to me that I'm not paying attention to? What does this picture that has been created want to teach me?
what is it I'm not looking at? And you look at it. Not blaming yourself, but you simply look at it. You look at the message. You look at what is it, what's in there for you to learn. And hopefully it doesn't have to be repeated again because hopefully you learn your lesson. If not, existence will do it again. It's not happening out of malice intention. It's not like life is mean and life wants to punish you. It's not it. It all comes from love. It all happens because love wants you wants to bring you back to your true nature. That's why it happens. And you shift your point of view. You look at it that way. And then it will bring you peace. And since you're not in a victim situation, and you're really looking at it from this point of view, then you start to see and receive the teachings, what you need to learn, what the message is for you. What is it you're not really looking at? Is it your ego? Were you too eager in a situation? You jumped into whatever you jumped into. And also it forces you to not to buy things based on its face value, because a lot of times something looks really good on the outside, but then when you go deep inside, you realize it's bullshit. It's non-existing. It's an illusion. So it helps you not to be naive and become real with everything. Not cynical, but sharp, aware. Awareness, being in your full power and really examining things, looking at things, you know, and checking things out, really being awake, being alive, being present in this moment. And that's what life does to you. Not sleepwalking. And that's what majority of people on the planet do, sleepwalking. And we don't want that anymore. We already done that. We're done with that phase. It's time to come home. We're all ready for it. It's time to come home. We've been out there for too long. Lost. It's time to come back. Come back. Come back. Come home. Come to Papa. Come to Mama. Come back home. She's waiting for you. Return to love. Come back home. The true love. Come and discover that the true love comes from yourself. You are who you are looking for. You are the source of the creation. You are the source of love. You. It's not anywhere else. It's not in anyone else. It's not in any books. It's not in any crystals. It's not in any gurus, anywhere else, any teachers, blah, 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 blah. It's you who are you looking for. But not the ego, not the, the thought, not the I, not that thought that I am blah, 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 blah. No, it's simple, simply the I am coming back to yourself. I am and it stays there and there is no thought. Then Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the power of the being 
reveals itself and you will see your own beauty. You will see how beautiful and amazing you are. And you're not needy. And you're full of love and light. That's who you are. But you can't touch it when the mind is busy. You have to go beyond that. Okay, so our next academy is going to be on Tuesday for 75 minutes. Uh, same time, we start at 10 a.m. California time, which is going to be 19 uh, Scandinavian European time. Thank you very much for joining me. We will be recording. Uh, we have already recorded this uh, session. And those of you who connect with me through Zoom, we will send you a copy of uh, this webinar. I look forward to seeing you, uh, sending you lots of love and light. Thank you for joining me. God bless. Bye-bye.